We love to get mail from you. Email us at comments at outlookvideo.org. To contact us by phone, call 408-293-3040, extension 205. Visit our website at outlookvideo.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash outlookvideo. And connect with us at facebook.com slash outlookvideo. Center for Living with Dying program of the Bill Wilson Center has been a steadfast and safe place for people going through grief from the loss of a loved one. The program offers emotional support, crisis intervention, and stress management with Janet Childs at the helm as director. Janet, thank you once again for joining Outlook Video and being with us this evening. It's an honor to be here, Roberta. Okay. Now, in the past, you've told us about uh, and given us the opportunity to explain what the, uh, living, the, dying, the living with Dying Center does there at the, at the Bill Wilson Center. What is the program at the Bill Wilson Center which you offer clients? It is to provide support and education and intervention for people living with the issues of loss and grief, trauma, serious illness, dying, or stress of any kind. And we work with both responders and caregivers and people from age two to age 92. Oh. So our youngest client was age two and our oldest client oh. was actually, I believe, 102. My goodness, so I didn't we, realize that you also yes. did with first of small children. I thought it was all Absolutely. adults. So it's people all throughout the community. Absolutely, and we have a special program for youth and children who are going through grief called our Healing Heart Program. Oh which is fantastic. It's, we have the littles, the middles, and the teens, uh -huh. and they get to meet in the age group that's their own age group. And so they know that a person their own age has gone through a loss. Yes. And, and then the adults meet in their adult group exactly. at the same time. And, that, uh, and I know to have a peer yes. really means a great deal Absolutely. To, to realize that you're not alone. Absolutely. You know, that you're not the only one going through this type of uh, experience and that, uh, again, yes. that, you're, that you're not alone with. With all the violence that's going on in the world right now, in our state, in our country, in the world, how does the Bill Wilson Center handle that type of grief and loss? We can provide both individual, group, and community support. Yes. We can gather people together that are feeling the loss of safety in the yes. aftermath of these terrorist attacks and violent incidents. And I think one of the ways that we found over the years uh, just doing this work for over 40 years now, which is amazing, yes, is that is. bringing people together that makes them the best support for each other. So when we're dealing with it in isolation, it's much harder than if we can deal with it in community God. and provide that support and courage and affirmation for each other that yes, we've indeed survived a very violent critical incident mm. and we can be the best support as we're moving forward. My spouse and I had uh, immediate family who were in Paris at the time of the attacks in France and this was extremely upsetting. Um, how does the Bill Wilson Center deal with things that are this type of violence? Uh, one of the um, wonderful events that we have every year is our Light of Lights Candle Lighting Ceremony. Yes, indeed. Where we actually lit candles yes. in, in honor of people that have died by violence yes. and people that have died of serious illness and all kinds of issues around grief and loss. And it brought us together as a community and enabled us to do an action step of lighting the candle. And when we do that, it takes us from out of control and puts us more in control. It's true, we can't stop the event from happening, but we can control how we respond to that event. Well, now, is that what the people are doing when we see on television, when they're taking candles and flowers and balloons and, and such to do sites which have happened all over the world? Now, is that the action part for them? That's the action part. Excellent. And it also is, it's a way of honoring so it's not only, yeah. you know, this is acknowledging the death of this person, but it's also honoring the life of. And I'm glad to see that this is happening more because what it does is, you know, in former times, you know, many cultures around the world have specific ways we can honor the lives of people that we love who have died. But we, in our fast-paced society, we've kind of gotten away from it. Yes. And so now coming back together, and especially coming back together as community, supporting each other, creates a whole dynamic of hope and healing. In fact, there's a great psychologist that comes out of Stanford that kind of validates through clinical research 
everything we've been talking about for the past 25, 30 yes. years. Yes. So you were saying that this young lady had written a book, it's called The Upside of Stress. Yes. And it does document how this truly affects not only psychologically us, but physiology That's as well. That's correct. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. I'm so excited because it absolutely mirrors what we've been knowing for so long. And how are those who are dealing with the stress of grief, how are those, being, uh, those particular issues being handled at the Center for Living with Dying? One thing is that our body responds in a stressful situation in a positive way for our survival. And we've been looking at stress as a negative response. That's true. And Most of us want grief. to avoid stress. Right. And looking at grief as a negative response when yes, it's not. Yes, that's true. It's actually our body and our mind's way of taking care of ourselves. So when we look at our stress response in a more positive way, it actually works for us. And when we gather together with others, it's a, it's a thing that, that Kelly McGonigal calls tend and befriend. We're actually tending and befriending, supporting each other. We boost the oxytocin, which is the good stress <gasps> hormone, you know, the feel-good hormone yeah. that happens when we come together and we're able to provide support to each other. Well, so that's, that's the positive out of this. This is, is amazing. We know how good it feels just to get a hug from someone. Yes. You know, yes. and we know that's a good feeling too. So is that, is that, that that's process exactly going? What is it that is. what's happening? That's what's happening. Uh, I and see. it also helps us to create meaning. We are mm. meaning-making animals. And so when we can make meaning out of our pain and grief, then the pain and grief is not for nothing. There should be an AIDS rejuvenation retreat coming up, is that correct? Tell us about that. Okay. And that came out of how can we make meaning? How can we make a healing day of fun and meaning? Hmm. Having survived living with HIV, hmm. having survived have, having family members or loved ones, you know, dealing with that issue, how could we make meaning out of it? How could we learn from it? And and become deeper, better people. And that's what it's about. And when in January does that happen? It's the fourth Friday. I believe it's January 24th. Okay. And everyone is welcome who is either living with HIV, friends, family members, lovers, right. or professional caregivers that work with HIV. Oh. All three groups are welcome. It's free of charge. Oh. And it's a wonderful day where we just play, eat, and, and just have wonderful healing practitioners, do massage and chiropractic. Oh and it's an incredible day of healing. Oh my goodness, talk about being community oriented yes. and doing yes. things for the community. And where will this retreat be held? It will actually be held at a wonderful location, okay. uh, the Center for Creative Living that donates ah. their space to it every quarter. Oh, very, very And nice. we have it in January, April, July, and in October. In the Light of Lights uh, event, which you recently held, there was one person in particular who had something very wonderful to say. Can you tell us about that? About that? I was so excited. When she came up and told me, she said, thank you for encouraging me to come. It was her first Light of Lights. Oh. And she had just lost a, a very dear family member. And she mm -hmm. said, Janet, I came here scared and shut down. I was scared about coming. I didn't want to come. She said, I sobbed uncontrollably as I went up to light my candle. Mm -hmm. She said, I was held without judgment and loving hands and voices cradled me to the new realization that my love will never die. Oh, how beautiful. That's poetic. It's poetic. It is. It's it was truly poetic. Absolutely. What a blessing. You're making me, I'm tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's powerful. But it is. It's very, very powerful. It's so powerful. And you said about 200 people were yes, at this event. it was an amazing event. Yes, yes. And everyone just showed up with their hearts open oh. and courageously acknowledged their loss, mm -hmm. but also claimed their love. Oh my goodness, yeah. what a great way to, to, actually, to do that and to be supportive of someone who's going through a loss as well. Absolutely, and they became supportive of each other. Wow, so it just it went full circle, yes? Full circle, Oh my Absolutely. goodness, what a wonderful thing. And that's the power mm -hmm. of when we can acknowledge and yes. we can express because if we have okay. a safe place to acknowledge, then we're not fighting our grief, we're working with it, we're flowing with it, and we're seeing what can I gather from this that will give me new meaning yeah. as I move forward in my life. We were also saying off camera how we both dislike that, that saying that, oh, get over it. Yes. When someone, you know, yes. you're going through something and someone just says, oh, get over it. 
that's not exactly what we should be doing. We should exactly. be getting through it. Yes. And I think that's what the, the what your program does so so splendidly. Um, now, back to that. To the there are four steps. There's the acknowledgement. Yes. Expressing, and there's two more. Yes. And the action. Action. Which is, as we said, talked about the lighting of lights, and there's celebrate. Yes. How can we celebrate the loss of someone? And now this sounds almost counterintuitive, doesn't it? How it does. do we celebrate? But what we mean by celebrate is getting reconnected back to what is still good in your life. Even after having survived a great loss, what is still standing? What is still good? What is still sweet? We can still appreciate the ocean and it's you know rushing waves and beautiful fragrant air and seagulls we can still experience a sunrise we can still experience a love of a person that is still alive or a wonderful coworker that mm -hmm. is sensitive to us and mm -hmm. provides us with support we can appreciate that we are still alive that maybe you know people we love did not survive, but that we are survivors, and how can we make the world a better place? Thank you for joining us once again, Janet. And for our viewers, please take a look at your screen, and you can see how you can contact the Bill Wilson Center and the Center for Living with Dying.